Would you like to see behind the scenes? Follow me. Hi, my name is Clint. I'm one of the owners and team lead here at the Commons Climbing Gym in Boise, Idaho. This is Gary Matos. He's our head root setter and big boss man in general. Um, and we're gonna do a little tour of what our walls look like from the backside. Everything is made with true three quarter inch uh, 12 ply, I think, Baltic birch, 11 ply, Baltic birch plywood. It's all CNC'd in factory and shows up like pre-cut, pre-angled. Everything is then laid out on the ground and you cut each one of these, they're called rafters, these pieces that cover the seam. Hand cut every single piece. We build them in what we call facets, which are basically think of that like one angle change on the wall, one flat panel. And then wherever an angle change occurs, that is another facet. Um, so when you're putting these things together, you have one person behind the wall screwing in from the back, one person from the front, placing the each square panel. And you do that over and over again, whilst tying into this steel superstructure that is maybe a tight shot, but um, this is a hinge, um, three quarter inch bolt. Someone on the front ties the panel to this and then you adjust all these pipes that actually tie back to the major structure behind, um, which is built beforehand. What are these called? Those are called T-nuts. Um, super handy. They're great for home projects too, but this is what we actually screw our bolts into that hold the holds on the wall. So here's one, here's a hold on the other side. Every once in a while, we will screw a hold on or set ah. screw a hold like a big hold that's going to spin. That's what that looks like. Does this have this first or you just don't do this at all? You just don't do this at all. There's no T-nut on the front. Uh, this in a climbing gym, you'll see either like a flat metal head of a, of a bolt that's holding the panel on or wherever the bolt hangers are also come tie back into this. And so when you fall in a climbing gym on lead, you're actually not falling on the plywood, you're falling on the steel superstructure. And that's why it's strong. So if you're thinking about like, if you live in Kansas or something and you're wanting a 40 foot home wall where you're gonna lead climb, just remember that we're not falling on the plywood here. <laughs> and I'm sure that Ryan's gonna show you what will happen if you whip on plywood. I totally want to whip on plywood now. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. I'm going to do some human <laughs> testing when I get home. Yeah, wear your safety glasses for the splinters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're worried about? <laughs> so this is pretty interesting too, I guess. Like these angles and these uh, writing. Zone 23, facet seven. facet 7, piece 3. Something like that. It's something like that. And then you go lay these out on the floor. So Gary and I were fortunate enough, I would say, because I was like flat broke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did no, this the is job. true. EP kind of saved my bacon. Uh, Anapri is the wall company that we hired to do this. They're awesome. US office is based in Bend, Oregon. They've been phenomenal to work with. Uh, they're also the wall provider for the US Olympics or for the Olympics and for USA climbing and World Cup climbing. Um, they do a lot of stuff. They do a lot of stuff. They're also the first wall manufacturer on the planet. So if you're thinking about building a gym, contact Antifree. They're going to pay us for that. I hope so. They're not. They won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this building new? The brick is old. Uh, the brick is old. We took out the floor and popped the ceiling off this thing and then built basically a new steel building within the existing old building. You don't have 50 foot empty buildings chilling in Boise? Surprisingly, you... no. Yeah. Uh, there were a few 28 foot, which yeah. is like 
Not super good a enough. Sick bouldering gym, maybe. You call that the superstructure? Yeah. So this is the superstructure. Okay. Uh, and you lay these up, and so you build this zone by zone, basically. You have this big metal framework, and it's then. Uh, and this gets attached to the actual building, which this you... is attached to the actual building. You can actually see it high way up there, where it's tied into the structural steel. Okay. Um, it ties in three places. Yeah. Okay. We'll just say that. And um, you put that up first. First. And what holds up this while you're building it before you attach it to the superstructure? So you put it up piece by piece, panel by panel. Okay. What's really interesting with how the rafters are is you set the panel in and the rafters, that's what these pieces are. We call them rafters. Okay. Basically hold that panel in place so that the person behind can screw it in and then attach it to the superstructure. And so you basically build this up and attach it to the superstructure as you go. And then the cool thing about these pipes is they're movable. Yes. And so then you do final tensioning to tension the entire wall together. Uh, you use lasers to level everything and make sure that it fits just right. Uh, what's super interesting, you were asking about our like wheel rock. Uh, that's going to be in the dark back here. Oh, but yes. Same thing over here. So we, we can actually lead on all of this as well because even though it's a fiberglass backing with secret sauce coating. Secret sauce coating, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, we actually tie all of the structural parts that you would be whipping on, again, back into the main steel structure. Wait, your hangers go directly into this? Yeah, so it's like a... Whoa. This is a metal plate that they fiberglass in, so on the outside. So it's like a hollow It's a bolt. hollow bolt. There's not a T nut. Like that's a T nut. That's a fiberglassed in sort of fancy. Fiberglassed in stainless steel nut. <laughs> Got you. So the the God. Oh, okay. There's the no maintenance is you can replace these. It's just a bit more work than a regular T nut. And these T nuts are screwed in rather than having teeth, like I've seen on I don't know T nuts that you'd buy for a home gym. Yes, and you can buy these too. Um, Escape makes really nice yeah, ones yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, the screw-in ones are definitely the way to go. They are, they tend to spin less and are a little bit easier to replace. So this right here is a hold. That is a hold. Not, this uh, is a hold. Not a hanger that you would whip on. Definitely not. The only hangers you're gonna whip on are here. Uh, this one, and honestly, this is probably not high enough. Our first Yeah, yeah, the next, that's. <laughs> the next one up. I just did an adaptive clinic in Twin Falls. Mm -hmm. And so when we get our adaptive program going here, we will switch these out for anchors um, so that we can have load bearing things close to the ground and build anchors that are directional up because part of the, part of the process for the adaptive climbing is you want to have a releasable top rope from the bottom. And so you need structure which we can tie into. It's a super versatile system. Like you're not really tied to any one of these holes. So sometimes like if we wanted to, we could adjust this or needed to, we could adjust this anchor point to any one of these T-nut holes and just move the T-nut over. EP is awesome. <laughs> on a proof. Uh, pound ins suck. If you're ever using pound ins on a home wall, uh, plan on not changing your holds out very frequently. Uh, they chew up your, your wood on the back panel. Mm -hmm. um, you can push them out as you're putting a hold on. So the screw-ins are the way to go if you plan on changing your holds decently frequently. Um, that way you can save your wall, save some money, spend a little bit more on the initial purchase and get screw-ons. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I've only seen the pound-ins. Yeah, the pound ins were a lot around for a long time, and everybody commercially has switched over to screw ins just because it saves you time, money, and a headache rather than having a spinning wall, a spinning hold on the front of your wall. I uh, imagine they don't cost a lot more; they just take more time to install. They take more time to install. They're, I don't imagine, only like a ten percent, fifteen percent increase in price. But, but that's a good point about chewing up your wood. 
those little spikes as soon as they start ripping loose just become a a really crappy drill. <laughs> this is a negative 16 degree angle change between facets like I was talking about before. Uh huh. And so these are all flat rafters, but these come oh, pre made. They give you those yeah, and they're pre glued, glued and screwed in. So is this the biggest Lego set you've ever built? <laughs> Yes, the bi the biggest, scariest, heaviest Lego set I've ever built. You guys do what? Use scissor lifts when you're? Yeah, yeah. the okay. person in the front does. Yeah. The person in the back gets to climb the like loose superstructure and use the big, what are those big hooks? Ladder hooks. Ladder hooks. Um, oh, that's how you clip in. That's yeah, how you protect that's your, that's your protection. Okay, you don't just set up a, a top rope on a micro traction. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not like free soloing all the scary slippery rafters. So this is my welder's shop. He let me put up my new lab here. And we put carpet in here so it doesn't have that annoying echo my other garage had. We even put carpet in here to be bougie. So we're gonna attach this bolt to this plywood sample that Commons Climbing Jump gave me to test, just to see what the plywood holds, even though that all the hangers, when they are installed, are in the superstructure. I'm just curious if 11 ply plywood can be stronger than the hanger. So I attach these two hangers here so I can attach it to the dyno side. But if I just clipped one of these, it would like pull sideways. It wouldn't fit in the machine. So I'm going to drill a new hole here and put in this T-nut about right there. Now this is a 3 8 inch bolt, but it takes a half inch hole for the T-nut. So let's do that right now. My hole is just not nearly as pretty as theirs. Let's secure this down. Now this stainless hanger should be stronger than 30 kilonewtons. So, So that's attached. We have a Dyna loop that is doubled up and put into here in steel beaner. So it should not have a problem. And our total force, which is on this, should be reflected on our dynamometer here. All right, that's 2.4. Let's turn on the slow motion. Okay, so my safety is kneeling. So I just saw wood fly. <laughs> that is very interesting. Oh, that is amazing. Good thing it's attached to the superstructure. The hangers actually uh, still got some life in it. At probably at least 10 more kilonewtons. Okay, so I put the hangers on the opposite side, which is gonna really, really help protecting the dynamometer. I'm gonna have some lights soon mounted here that don't flicker during slow motion. And this is kind of what we got going on there. We're gonna be pulling straight out. That PLX hanger will break between 50 and 60 kilonewtons, so it's plenty strong enough. Oh, ah, I'm such an idiot. All right, I do understand how T-nuts work, okay? I just didn't think about it. On this side, they're screwed on. That's the only thing holding them. Okay, I'm trying this again. T-nuts on this side, I didn't even screw them in because they just push against each other. It should be fine. Let's do it again. I'm going to have to vacuum all this up when we're done here. Oh my gosh, it came out. What are the chances? Oh my gosh, it did more than come out. It delaminated. Hmm. Brick testing wood is fun.